playtime, 37 hours. <laughs> of course, yeah, all right. So we're, we're basically just waiting on this this machine here for yeah. now. All right, okay. Uh, which is waiting on speed modules. Uh, we're not doing any research because then all the... We're taking away resources from yeah. the production. The only thing that is slightly impacting is the fact that we are building, like, solar panels and stuff like that. But that's all right. I, th I think we're fine. We kind of need the power to get through... Uh, I'm gonna go yeah. like look at this massive expanse of solar panel down here. It's uh, it's quite something. Can I get through past all these trees? I can. I can. Beautiful. The noise. Ah, oh, the the crackle of the lightning. That's amazing. Oh, <laughs> oh, I found a bit. I can't get through now. Keep down the tree. Yeah, I just start throwing grenades around, right? <laughs> no, not there. Anywhere but there. <laughs> okay. Currently, we're consuming 166 megawatts and climbing. At least we're surviving the night. Yeah, yeah, we are surviving the, the night beautifully. So, how many more um, rocket guidance oh, parts oh do we need? Oh my god, I just realized something. Oh yes. Oh god. Yeah. Don't starve and Factorio combined. Don't, oh man, that would be... Oh, that would even play out quite well. Oh man, could you imagine Deerclops comes through and smashes up your, your rocket pad at 98% or something like that? Oh. Yeah. Or you just need to keep the entire base lit at night. Just yeah, lit at night. You need um, like defenses around. I mean, uh, we we uh, we have defenses around the outside anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, keeping the whole place lit. I mean, you got you got lamps and stuff like that, so that that would work yeah. quite well, quite well. Oh, we have holes in the wall. Yeah, we have a hole in the wall. I think. Seventy-five percent. Okay, where where do we reckon that? Is? Oh, look over there. I see them. Oh, they're asking for repairs, but they don't have any way to be repaired because they're not in the network. Are they not in the network? No, that's that's. No, the they area. are, but uh, we don't have any repair kits. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, so we need to pick a robo port. Say this one here. Put down an assembly machine. That's what I'm looking for. Find the repair packs. These need iron gears and electronic circuits. Oh look, we got iron gears here. We got electronic circuits just over here. Can I can I use these somehow? Maybe these ones over here would be better. So the thing I found, if you if you really just want to take one resource from a belt, is use a double splitter. It works amazingly well. The first one just doubles out the the system, so you don't have to like um, re okay. remove a unit from one thing, and then you can just yeah, that's that's smart. Oh, look at it! This is beautiful. We can even is that gonna work like that. It is gonna work like that. Beautiful. beautiful. And we just need a bit of power, and then like that, right there we go. Repairs are underway. Oh well, we're gonna walk away from that system and say it works. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so let's have a look at the yeah the uh, the map has stopped complaining that is available to go around and fix stuff beautiful beautiful so science officer while we're stood around waiting for the last parts of the rocket to be put together uh, I, I I have a question for you so um, yes in the in the in the giant hypothetical situation where a uh, a mad demigod has taken you hostage and says make me the best piece of technology you can from just using the power of your brain. He, well, I say just you. He, he will provide you with raw materials, and you need to make the the highest form of technology you can. Now we, obviously, as superior beings in the 26th century, have been able to make a rocket. We've got a satellite to go up in orbit and stuff like that. But if I was to pick a random point in history and say, like, the 21st century, I don't think a version of me, average human person, could make a rocket. I could probably make a pretty big big explosion. I could bring all the stuff together that looks like a rocket. Um, but I don't think I could actually successfully get into orbit. If I was bit, if I was to be forced to sit on top of that rocket, I'm dead. Right? Um, so we're in the 21st century. Right now, we're 26th century, right? Yeah, yeah but... The, the, but the, the time well, I was just saying that 21st century me probably wouldn't be able to do that. At what point between those two do you think the technological revolution happened that made, made average person like you and me able to launch a rocket? I don't think... No, no, no I, don't, I think a person in the 21st century could build a rocket if he had the materials to do it. You, you reckon? You, you reckon they could get the, the pump flows right, the cryogenic freezing of the engine bell so it doesn't explode behind you? Stuff like that. Oh. I, I, I think I think that's the problem, is there's a lot of little things that we haven't considered. I, I could probably make myself a suborbital solid rocket. 
All right, I could um, I could probably make a firework yeah. that is big enough to get me to see space. I just don't, I think orbit is such a bigger challenge. So uh, well, it it is, but then again, before all of well, before oh, let's put it like a, before Google man landed on the moon. So <laughs> and before Google man did indeed land on the moon. Yeah, yeah, when they had just like slide calculator slide rules and like abacuses and and a <laughs> ancient technologies I, I th did they have mechanical counters i think they did of some description but lost in the in the the the, the wilds of time i like the the follow-on question from that is like so all right we, we will accept that 21st century average man could make something that approximated a rocket could probably like make a make a flying machine of some description i mean you don't need to I do need to point out the 21st century is a long time. There is a long time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll give you early 21st century is where I'm okay, talking from. Okay, that's different. Yeah, because end of 21st. Late 21st yeah, yeah. Oh, well, of course. I mean, they could build hover cars for us. I mean, <laughs> I, I I remember when my great grandpappy was telling me about him growing up, uh, talking about making his first hover car project at school. Uh, it was it was glorious. Was it powered by potatoes? It was indeed waste products. It was all part of the green revolution. Uh, he says he's a science teacher. Was a wonderful man, Doc Brown uh, or something like that. Big hair he spoke of. Oh yeah, look at that red red. The turrets ran out of bullets. <laughs> How do you know when you've been on a planet too long? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Question: Do you want to put down lasers? Uh, do we have access to them easy enough? Yes. Yeah, if we've got access to well, them easy enough. Battery, steel, and iron plates. Well, engine units, apparently. Yeah. No, that's 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 flamethrowers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> close enough. Close Quite, enough. I mean, wh whatever we can make use of, yeah, let's do it. Honestly, Captain, I mean, boats produce heat, so <laughs> it's just energy in a different form, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, that is the, uh, the, the, the purvey of life, if you will. The domain of life is turning energy into other energies. It seems to be what we do. What would you say is the most efficient form of energy? To be converted it, into something yeah, else. Yeah, into something. Well, obviously, uh, like, you, you want the full, the full mass uh, conversion, you know, matter, antimatter. Um, though, am I the only one that thinks it's weird that we have this ant matter antimatter that comes down to electric charge, right? That's that's the whole thing with antimatter is it's actually the opposite electric charge, kind of. Okay. Um, but why why don't we have like the anti spin or the anti gravi gravity version or the and why why are there not other parameters that are anti versions? I'm not sure, but they do have a different question. Yeah, so I'm not sure. If, if, if there happens to be a cosmologist in the in the high command, l let me know why not, because that's actually bugging me for the past couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, go, go uh, on. <laughs> my question is, wait, why is this not working? Uh, because we're running out of iron. Yeah, I, I told you that the other iron station didn't have enough iron last. Oh yes, we yeah we did find out that. I mean, there's still 2.7k ore there. I mean, it's... It's been, we need to expand if we want to get off the rock, and that's annoying. That is very uh, but, annoying. Uh, uh, what would you call it? If matter can be and matter base, the, uh, the opposite of what it is by annihilating it itself. Can light? Oh, is there an anti-light? Can can oh oh is oh, because there is there's, you got like is there an anti an antiphoton? I I don't know if there is or not actually. Now that I stop and think about it, the so, I, I've never heard is, of one. But you know. does just light annihilate itself when it comes to contact with itself and? I know that because it's be scary like one. <laughs> two high energy packets of light do collide. Then I believe they can make make solid matter. So I don't know. Maybe maybe I've got a fundamental misunderstanding with that. Um, but I'm fairly sure one of the early for no no there was some matter in inside it wasn't there. Well, I was going to say one of the early forms of fusion was firing giant lasers inside a gold disc uh, gold cylinder. Sorry, and getting enough enough energy together to compact the thing in the middle uh, but that that there was actually a, a material inside that it wasn't just light yeah. I, th I mean there's all sorts of what is it the the kugel blitz um where you can turn lasers into black holes right you, you just get enough 
enough light energy into somewhere to uh, exert enough pressure on space-time to twist it into the funny shape that makes a black hole. 86%. We're so close. We're so close. We're not digging enough at the top station for this. And so you reckon we need another set of miners up to... I've, lo I've lost it. Where is it? There we go. Here. Yeah. Another set of miners up here. Well, we can totally do that. Do I have any miners on me? Uh, I've got 14. Oh, you can tell the robots to do it. We can tell the robots to do it. Okay. Okay. I know what I'm going to do. Um... <laughs> I'm going to ruin everything really quickly. <laughs> I think this is the next level of laziness. We're using the robots to uh, go and do our, do our work. So we don't even need to leave our impenetrable fortress that has been penetrated multiple times. Uh, no, 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 I'm going with the impenetrable. Uh, we're definitely there. I think we should go up there as, as well. Yeah, I think we should as well. There's a there's a couple of uh, like merging things and stuff like that. It's a lot easier if we're up there. Yeah, let's let's go. That said, on that top line going well. All right, cool. Where, where am I? I? I am here by the rocket. Quick look at the rocket. 87%. That, that's probably going to be ready by the time we get back. I shouldn't say probably. Yeah. No. Where does this train go? Uh, it best go to Cisco, yeah. Sometimes I look at our train stations and I'm quite proud, and other times I feel nothing but shame. I'm not sure which one right Why? now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's taking a while to unload. We could definitely have these, like, shifting off quicker. But then, like, you, you'd need a buffer system set up and... I mean, it's pretty fast, honestly. It's pretty fast, yeah. When you still need to do the ro work for the robots. Wow, we've been we've been pushing them hard. I also think we're um we're collecting them up somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now let's disassemble the empty ones. <laughs> yeah, use them elsewhere. That has, that has, that doesn't, that doesn't. I think that's well at the end, yeah. There's some. That one, yeah. <laughs> This poor little guy. Ah, he's going to be picking up stone. Let's get rid of him. Okay, beautiful. I'm going to jump in this train before we disappear. All right, that should definitely give us a bit more of a better feed. Got a got a doubling out. Oh, there's a bit of a problem down there. There we go. Down below? Uh, there's a few a uh, few oh, miners that have power. got power, but it's all right. I've set up a the word that I'm looking for is an order so that the robots can go and do the Oh, <laughs> watching that play out on the map was terrifying. Self-driving cars. Self-driving cars, yes. And a system that's completely automated where the, the person, passenger, is a passenger. Human yeah, is a yeah. passenger and there is no wheel, there is not, there is no wheel. There is nothing in, no way that the person can control. Yeah, uh, you, you've just got a touchpad so you can hook up to the internet. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. And the entire system is based on that. So every other car is also functioning like that. Intersection where there is six lanes in and out. Yeah. No lights. No lights. I mean, you just gotta gotta believe in the computer, right? Yes. Like, so the computer know. knows it's not gonna hit anything. Goes into the intersection. The computer also knows that the position of every other vehicle in the intersection. Yeah. It knows what speed it must go to not hit anything, and it's constantly talking to every other car to make sure that they're not malfunctioning in any way to basically mess up the calculation. Yes. The human doesn't. <laughs> well, that, that's why you don't let them. <laughs> yeah, so the human only sees that he's now approaching a car that's speeding at 120 kilometers an hour through an intersection, and it's gonna miss it by a couple of inches. Well, I can understand as uh, as members of the exploratory force, we we are used to taking manual control of vehicles, and thus that would be that would be quite scary to people like us because we 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 allow for our um, puny puny reaction times and the fact that we have to react. You know, to going into these systems, none of these computer none of these computer controlled cars need to react because everyone knows what they're doing ahead of time, right? Yeah. And that's why it would be scary for us, because we're used to having to account for our um, reaction times. But, you know, your average person that grows up driving to school every day in one of these things, uh, that's just going to be normal. That's just going to be life. So, uh, you know, they, they might, as a small child, flinch a couple of times and their parents will laugh at them until it doesn't happen anymore. Honestly, I think the children would adapt much faster than the parents. 
yeah, yeah, but uh, like at this point, the parents are also used to it, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, they, they, they did their adaption as a small child as well, or as the teenager that got to watch the, the glorious revolution play out or something Yeah, but like we that. will also have the one generation that's going to be the older parents that are going to be sitting in those cars. Yeah, they're, they're the ones that are going to cause all the accidents. <laughs> they're, 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 they're the reason that the first, like first couple of years are going to be full of horrific uh, driver induced accidents when when these drivers that do enter those junctions will suddenly wrestle manual control back off the car because they think they're just about to smash into this thing that both were just about to turn anyway but because they've taken manual control it then piles into the side of it or something like that uh, and of course people being people will blame them that did blame the machine when it was very, very much just demonstrably proven, even in like court cases, that it was the humans' fault. Though they'll still argue against it mm. because that's humans. You did have the conversation topic about uh, what could you make? Uh... Yeah, yeah. What do you reckon you could put together? I mean, yeah, I, I feel like it's well within my capabilities as a captain to put together a fusion generator. But like in the past, I don't know. What would Victorian Captain Twitchy make? I, I, I think Victorian Twitchy could definitely make a steam powered traction engine. Something to make maybe an elevator of some description. That's an interesting idea. I mean, the, the thing is, so we're basing, basing this conversation of a modern day person being transported back in time. I, yeah, well, okay, yeah. What would a modern. Oh man, could you imagine the technological leaps? Something we were talking about. Uh, if you were teleported back in time, say, uh, even like to the Iron Age or something like that, somewhere where like metalworking is common, but people's ideas are not, there's, that's all right, that's taken care of. There are certain things that we take for granted, like control of magnetic fields, that would actually be very difficult to replicate. Um, you know, ev everyone's like, oh, if I was to be transported back to prehistoric times i would just make a generator and make myself some powered lights and stuff but for that you need a magnet where'd you find the magnet from <laughs> in the local supermarket well that, you're not going to in, in in iron age britain or something you know you, you're gonna have to like talk to these people about you know uh, that's assuming you can even talk to these people but once you've figured out how to communicate with them you got to talk about these rocks that like magically pull each other towards each other you know and, and how do you not get killed for sorcery at that point yeah uh it, it's tough it's tough oh uh, we, we are nearly there 94 percent working hard that's still slow i mean i'm saying still slow and looking at the motion of this machine here and just <laughs> this, yeah, so this machine is like pumping over as quick as it can 285 percent I can make it go faster. Hey, if you can make it go faster, let's make it go faster. It's literally the last bit we're waiting for. This thing needs to make 10 times. Like this one's also making, uh, so that's pretty good. I, I don't know whether this one stops at any point. Here, have some blue circuits. Make some more. <laughs> oh, I've even got some rocket stuff on me. Wait, put it all in there. Mm, well, we can make it go faster if we got some speed modules. Uh, I have six normal speed modules and a speed module Mark II on me. Wow, where's that going? Uh, and we can put Mark III's inside the, mach uh, the machine, yeah. Oh, I've only got Mark II's on me, unfortunately. I put the Mark II's into this bucket then, and this one. Why steel stopped? What's going on with the system all of a sudden? We, we just lost one mine, I mean... Uh, I think we need another iron train. You might be right there. We need faster loading, stack inserters, I guess. Yeah, stack inserters up there would be pretty good. Yeah, actually, on especially on that inside edge, the ones putting it actually yeah. into the train. Yeah. Do you have any stack inserters? Uh, have three. Six. <laughs> How many do I we have need? Four. I, uh, One, we two, need three, eight. four, five, six. Uh, we need twelve. Oh. Here we go. oh. So I'm halfway there. Hang on, let's let's see if I can make more. Iron get. I'm only missing iron. Okay, we can do this. Nothing quite like skimming off the, the valuable resource. <laughs> we gotta spend resources okay, to make resources. Four, so that's ten. I just need to be able to make two more. Oh, you got more. Oh, you launching! More. Launching! Launching! It shouldn't be launching. It's it not launching. It's okay, it's preparing. All right, cool. Ooh, panic. Panic. <laughs> I just <laughs> heard the siren just go and I was like, what? 
Okay, no, oh look my at this. God, this is... All right, rocket inventory. Quick, we need to... Oh, do we put the satellite up first? We could... <laughs> how, how do we then get into that? Enter... Uh, enter... Yeah. There we go. Okay. I, yeah, All right. just... okay. All right, I need to empty my inventory of all this stuff because... As we've previously dis previously discussed, you see these guys, you see yeah. these hard-working people. We need to take them with us. So I'm gonna just empty everything out of my inventory and try and take as many as we can with us. Well, it's been a while since I've emptied my inventory so fully. Am I moving? I am moving. All right, here we go. I'm going up to copper, and I'll work my way back. It's a glorious moment. <laughs> Finally get to go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> taking the robots with us is going to be work. It's going to be work. But I am, totally, you know, I, I am committed to my subjects. You know, <laughs> I, I feel, I feel not only on this planet have I been Captain Twitchy, but occasionally I've had to step up into Lord Protector and Emperor Twitchy. Uh, <laughs> and, and this is a this is a, a charge that I take seriously. This is... I don't think many of the robots actually made it this far up the network. When I say that, I've picked up two robots so far. Yeah. <laughs> the, the fact that I picked up two kind of surprised me, actually. <laughs> I will bring these top ones back. Those robots are going somewhere weird. Are they... what? what? Are there oh. a bunch of logistic robots that are just kind of like floating around up here? Trying to recharge? Yeah, I'm going to let them all inside. drop into here, yeah. Let them drop in and then pick them all up. 13 yep. logistic robots. Beautiful. Surprise is logistics robots rather than. Um, it's because they're. It's because they were trying to follow us. <laughs> yeah, and pick up things. Wow, when you're disassembling your entire logistics network. Well, well we we got to make sure we bring them with us. Got to yeah. make sure. Mm, now, there are a mighty amount of robots in the. Oh. Uh, just okay. So just don't disassemble the uh, uh, um, robot port that we are exporting from with the chests. What do I do about the ones in the solar panels? Because I can't um, even get in there. Um. There doesn't appear to be any robots there. Well. Oh, there uh, there are robots around though. Oh no. <laughs> dig through, I guess. Do I put a bunch of storage chests by this one so that when they go and move stuff? Yeah, I think I will actually. Logistics, there's some storage chests in this network. And then we can like destroy the storage network and then all the robots will bring stuff here, right? We've got something outside of the network that I see. Oh, poor little robot there. There are robots outside the network that don't know where to go. Oh, really? Literally right next to me, what? Come here, you guys. I'll carry you. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get all the. This seems to be quite a quite a popular resting spot for the logistics robots. So I'm gonna start mm -hmm. taking them out of here as well. well. Are we down to zero? I'm, I'm getting number of available robots zero. Yeah, but uh, oh, out of because, how many? Oh <laughs> uh, wait, yeah, no, out of zero. But that's because this is a isolated little network now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, in that case, let's rip it up. Not needed. All right, is this one connected? Okay, so we got 128 logistics still out there and 700 constructions left. How do I... How do I entice them over here? Oh, that was the one to export everything into, but okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I needed to pick up a robot from underneath it. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Yep. Oh, we need more boxes. And this is it. This is the last row port. Uh, okay, now we can take all of it and launch. Let's pick all these up. Pick all Are these you gonna up. pick everything from this chest, or do you wanna carry them all? I should be able to carry them all. It looks like I've got quite a few space for thousands. Yeah. Here you go, in all of this chest. That's good, because I've got just enough space for them. See, they just kind of stop here and don't go anywhere. Oh, I need to put the robot port away. There we go, do that. Oh, there's another robot in oh, the solar field. Well, uh, none left behind. One construction robot somewhere. All right, science officer, if you'd like to get on board first to welcome me aboard, we will do yeah. this. Yep. Yeah. Oh, open stuff on me. I'm going to bring a lot of repair kits. <laughs> yeah, we're probably going to need them. Yeah. Something tells me we're going to need them. 
All right, here we go. Enter to get on, uh, and I just hit launch. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, blast off. Ah, uh, oh, oh, the the noise is happening. I see some rumblings. There is fire beneath us, and we looked oh, finally, finally after many, many, many reports, oh make God. our way. Yeah, it's a bit loud. It's a bit loud, but we're here. We're here. Ah. Oh. Ba bam Glorious end screen. Look at this. Uh, get out of the way. Yeah. Okay, continue for save replay. Well, we, we did very well. We did very well. Look at this. I killed a car. <laughs> <laughs> I killed a player. <laughs> I killed a chest and a fast inserter. Electrical pole. <laughs> a level two assembly machine. Well, sorry, sorry. We finally did it. We finally got off the planet. I am yes. overjoyed about how that happened. Took us significantly longer than we thought it would, but... Uh, it was good fun. Good fun. Yeah. I've got a feeling these numbers are off. I definitely have killed yeah. more than 15 big worms and stuff like that. But, you know, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, so high command. This gives us a, a situation to address you directly. Obviously, we have fled the planet. Uh, we want to know what the next mission should be. We're, we're looking for something relatively simple. Uh, re relatively similar. Sorry. So something where we're like, you know, crash scenario try and try and escape the scenario or something like that you know i think i think that's kind of what we yeah. want do you agree <laughs> yeah yeah so um uh, so let us know high command but with that it's captain's log for the last time signing <laughs> off well, not the last time wow well, yeah for <laughs> last time on fact tokyo signing off yeah <laughs> <laughs> Ending the series as we did the rest of it, shambolically. 